Welcome to Make Master Engineering. This video will guide you through the steps in getting registered for your first year in engineering. In this video, we will be going over the registration process for Engineering 1, Computer Science 1, and BTEC 1. Now, while the main steps do remain the same for these three programs, there are a few differences. So when we reach the registration section, simply follow the instructions for the program that you are applying to. To get started at McMaster, there are six main steps. The first is to activate your Mac ID. Then you need to make sure you submit a new student form. Once you've done that, we'll plan which courses we need to take to get into your first year program. Then we'll go and register for those courses on Solar, which is our student online academic registration system. And then we'll choose a payment method of how we're going to pay and complete a payment agreement. And finally, we will enable our McMaster services such as email. For each of the steps in the video, you may see links which will appear on the screen. If you're watching the video on YouTube, these links will be in the description or you can type them in your address bar. The links will show up in boxes at the bottom of your screen, like this one. This is a really useful site because on the Registrar's website, all the steps that we go through today are also available in written format and in further detail. So let's begin with the first step, activating your Mac ID and password. Your Mac ID is a unique username that McMaster gives you that it combines the letters of your last name and your initials. Your Mac ID is not your student number. Instead, you need to activate it using your student number and a unique barcode, which are located in the top right corner of your McMaster letter of acceptance, which you should have received in the mail. Once your Mac ID is activated, we'll be able to access MUGSY, which stands for the McMaster University Gateway to Student Information. It allows you to view all of your personal, academic, and financial aid information, as well as payment agreement information. You'll also be able to check your grades, print and view your personal timetable, as well as update your personal information such as your mailing address. If your address or your contact information changes, you'll want to make sure to use Mugsy to keep it updated and accurate because this is the information that the university uses to contact you. To activate your Mac ID, the first step that we're going to do is go to Mugsy. You can go to mugsy.mcmaster.ca and you'll see a screen that looks like this. Once you're there, you'll see a link that says activate your Mac ID. Click on it and a pop-up window should appear. If the window doesn't appear, make sure that you have pop-up blockers turned off in your browser. When the window opens, you'll be typing in three things. Your McMaster student number, as well as your barcode number. We mentioned both of these previously. For security purposes, you'll also have to enter your date of birth, and you have to enter it in the format of year, month, and then day. Once you've entered these three things, click on the Submit button to continue. You will now see the Mac ID Terms of Use Acknowledgement. Read it carefully and then click on the I Agree button. Next, the system will ask you to choose a password. This password is going to be used very frequently. You're going to be using it to access your McMaster email as well as access Mugsy, so it needs to be easy enough for you to remember. But also note that it needs to be very secure because accessing Mugsy will give someone access to changing your courses around and let them view your personal information. So make sure not to share your Mac ID or password with anyone. Mugsy does have some rules for the characters that need to be in your password. So make sure to read that carefully when choosing what you want your password to be. Once you've selected your password, type it into the password box and then type it again into the verify password box. Next, you will be asked to enter three challenge questions. These security questions will be asked to you if you forget your password. Once you're finished, click on the submit button and you'll be shown a confirmation screen showing your Mac ID now that it has been activated. And that's it, you've activated your Mac ID. 
Step two in the registration process is to fill out and submit a new student form. The form should have been included in your acceptance package. If not, you can go to the URL on your screen now, download the form and print it off yourself. The form requires you to attach a passport sized photo of yourself. This photo will be used for your student card. It is not required that you attach an official passport photo, just a passport sized photo. Once completed, mail or drop off the completed form to the office of the registrar. You can see the address now on your screen. If you decide to drop off the form in person when the office is closed, you can use the drop box which is located just outside of the office. Step 3 is to plan out which courses you need to take to get into your first year program. We plan this out ahead of time because Solar, which is the system that we use to register for our courses, has a 45 minute time limit. So you'll want to have all of your course codes written down before going into Solar so you can complete registration within 45 minutes. To know which courses to take for your program, you'll want to check the McMaster Undergraduate Calendar. This calendar is available online at the registrar's website. Appearing on your screen now are three links to the registrar's website. These links will go to the specific page in the undergraduate calendar for your program. So type into the address bar the link for your program now to continue the steps. While the page loads, I will explain what you should be seeing on your screen. The first thing you'll see is a listing of all the required courses for your program. If you are in Engineering 1 or Computer Science 1, you will see that you need to take elective courses. To see all of the available electives, click on the Elective Courses Available to Level 1 Students link. This brings up a page that shows all of the electives available to all students at McMaster. But you will notice that some of the courses have an asterisk beside them. If you're an Engineering 1 student, you can't take any of the electives that have an asterisk. If you're a Computer Science student, you can take courses that have the asterisk. Go through the list and select elective courses that interest you most. Make sure to write down a few backup electives just in case the ones that you selected are full when you go to register for them in Solar. Take a look at the course codes. You'll notice that some have a 3 at the end and some have a 6 at the end. A 3 means that the course runs for one semester, either Term 1 or Term 2. If it has a 6 at the end, it means it runs for both terms, so it would run all year long. You need to select enough courses to fill the elective units required for your program. Switching over to students who are registering in Bachelor of Technology 1, you can see that you do not have to select any electives. Instead, you need to choose a stream, and depending on the stream that you choose, your courses are already predefined for you. So as you can see in the requirements, six of the units need to come from a stream that you select, and your choices are Automotive and Vehicle Technology, Biotechnology, or process automation technology. Choose which stream you're going to go into and write down the course codes for that stream. You may notice that some of the courses in the requirements have a zero at the end, such as WIMIS 1A00. This simply means that the course is a zero unit course, so it doesn't add anything to the unit totals. Degree Completion BTEC students, visit the link on your screen to view your program specific requirements. Note that if you were interested and would like consideration for Engineering and Management as a Level 2 program, you will need to take Econ 1B03 as one of your electives. 
Now that we have planned out and written down all of the course codes for the courses that we need to take for our program, we're going to move on to step number four, where we register these courses using Solar. Solar opens to different programs and faculties on different dates. The dates that Solar opens for your program is now shown on the screen. You are encouraged to register as early as possible. It is extremely important that you register all of your courses and you complete your payment agreement before the end of July because failure to do so could result in a conflicting timetable. To begin, we're going to access Solar. To do so, simply go to mugsy.mcmaster.ca and log in by typing your Mac ID and password into the box on the left and then click on the Login button. Once in, click on the Solar button in the navigation at the top. Solar will open in a pop-up window. You'll see the McMaster University Statement on Collection of Personal Information and Protection of Privacy Statement. Read it carefully and then click on the Continue button. Next, you'll be presented with a list of the registration options you have. You're going to want to click on Undergraduate Registration and Course Selection for the September session. Click on the blue link. Next, you'll be presented with the Student Academic Responsibility Statement. Read it carefully and then click on the Continue button at the bottom. Next, an alert window will pop up showing your country of citizenship and also your social insurance number. Make sure that these are correct, and if they are, click on the OK button. You will now be presented with a list of all the undergraduate programs that you have available to you. Click on the Select button to the left of your program to continue. The system will ask you to confirm your choice. Now note that once you confirm your choice, you won't be able to go back and change it. So make sure you've selected the correct program. Okay, so Solar has started the 45 minute session now. So you have 45 minutes from now to select all of your courses and confirm your payment agreement. So to start, go to your list that we made earlier of all your courses you need to select and start entering them in. So you're gonna choose from the subject dropdown, the subject for your first course. So for example, engineering. Then you're going to choose the term for that course. Note that we are going to be selecting courses for both terms, term one and term two. So we're gonna be picking our courses for the entire year. The number one means that it's in first term. Number two means second term. And the number three means it's a full year course, which means it goes for both terms. The letter D means a daytime class and the letter E means an evening class. The next step is to select your course section, lab section, and or tutorial section. Just click on the drop down and choose whatever is available. Remember that if you're selecting these before the end of July, you don't need to worry about anything conflicting because the system will automatically make sure you have a conflict free timetable. Now for most engineering courses, the terms are quite well defined. But there are some courses in engineering that you will want to take in separate terms. For example, Engineering 1D04 and Engineering 1C03 for those taking the Engineering 1 program. It's highly recommended that you take those in separate terms because of the high workload. You'll also have the option of selecting a term for many of the complementary electives. And it is recommended that you take these in separate terms. Once you're done, click on the Add button on the left side to add the course to your list, and then repeat the steps to continue adding more courses to your list. Once you've added a course, if you've made a mistake, you can click on the drop-down box on the left and choose Modify or Undo, which will delete the course. Once you've added in all your courses, make sure that you've added the Health and Safety course, which is mandatory to get into second year of engineering. The course will show up as WIMIS 1A00 and is a zero unit course. If you were a student entering BTEC 1, make sure that you take WIMIS 1A00 and also EngTech 1EEO, which is the introduction to the technology co-op program. And remember, it's a zero unit course, so it won't add or affect your unit count. 
These courses are based on pass or fail. You're not given a grade for them. And you will need to pass the health and safety course in order to register for your level two engineering courses. Once you've added all of your courses for your level one program, click on the verify changes and check conflicts button. You will be shown a list of all the courses that you added and will be asked to confirm them. Click on the apply requested changes button to confirm your course selections. Two things will happen. First of all, a pop-up window will open showing your tuition and supplementary fees. Secondly, you'll notice that in the main window, there will now be a column on the right side that has the word past beside all of your courses. If you do not see the word past, it means that there's some sort of conflict that you'll need to correct, and Solar will tell you what that conflict is. Registration is a two-step process, so you need to confirm all your changes by clicking the Apply Requested Changes button, otherwise all of your changes will be lost and your registration will not be successful, so make sure that you click on Apply Requested Changes to continue. Click OK to continue. Your personal timetable will now be available on Mugsy shortly. You will now be shown a summary of all of your courses. Make sure that you've registered for all of your required courses. When you're finished, click on the Payment Agreement button. Once you've completed course registration in Solar, you need to complete the Payment Agreement step. If you don't complete the payment agreement, then the courses that you just selected will be deleted, so you need to complete the payment agreement in order to complete your registration process. The payment agreement is a mandatory step in SOLAR, and it is an agreement between you and McMaster University confirming your intent to pay. You will also use this agreement to indicate how you intend to pay. Also note that your course timetable will not show up in Mugsy until you complete the payment agreement, so it's highly recommended that you complete the payment agreement before the end of July. All students who have confirmed their payment agreement by September 1st will also avoid the $50 late registration fee. Please refer to the Student Accounts and Cashiers website for further information. A link has appeared on your screen for that website right now. There is also a written guide on how to complete the payment agreement, and you can download that by going to the URL on your screen. That brings us to step 5 in this video, completing and agreeing to the payment agreement. The first step is to go into Solar. Now if you've been following the steps previously, you should still have Solar open and you should have clicked on the Payment Agreement button. So you should be now looking at the Payment Agreement. If you weren't following along earlier or you came back to this video later to complete the Payment Agreement step, you'll have to first open Solar. And once you have Solar open, you'll notice that there's a new link there that says Undergrad Payment Agreement. Click on that and it'll bring you to the Payment Agreement screen. Now that we're on the Payment Agreement screen, I'll explain what you're looking at. First of all, in the top left corner, there is a section labeled Student Fee Criteria. Review and verify all the information in this section is correct because your fees are based on the information that appears here, so it's very important that all the criteria are correct. The next section you'll see on the right is Student Fee Totals. This section lists all of your fees for your tuition, your supplementary fees, which you can click on to read more about those. You also see fees for residence, if you're living in residence, as well as for meal plans. Then there's a total of all those fees and the net fees. In the bottom left corner, you'll see the funding options available to you. Now, funding options are payments that originate from another source that are paid directly to McMaster on your behalf. So things like OSAP, bursaries, and scholarships will show up here. If there's a grade out option, like for example, if scholarships are grayed out, that means that they aren't available at the moment, but they may become available at a later date. Some information such as OSAP, entrance scholarships and residence allocations may not be available on the payment agreement until late July or the beginning of August. 
you may continue and confirm and then return to the payment agreement for later updates. If you are expecting a partial scholarship, check off the box beside external agency partial scholarship and then enter the amount you expect to receive. When you are satisfied with your selections, proceed to the payment plan section. This is section number four, labeled payment options. In this box, you will see your different payment choices. There's payment in full, there's a flex plan where you pay in different installments, and there's also an arrangement with a service representative if you're unable to meet the terms of any of the above plans. Select whether you would like to pay in full or pay in installments, but make sure to note that if you choose the installment choice, that there will be interest charges and administrative fees. Read over each of the payment options carefully, and then click on the small circle beside the option you want to select. Once you've done that, click on the preview button to generate your most up-to-date financial summary and payment schedule. Once you've done that, you'll notice that three new boxes appear at the bottom. If you scroll down, you'll see that there's a new section called Section 6, Payment Schedule, Section 7, Payment Methods, and Section 8, Messages. Section 6 is really important because it shows the payment schedule and amounts for each of the payments according to the payment option that you selected earlier. You will avoid unnecessary fees and charges by complying with your payment schedule. The next section, Payment Methods, outlines the different payment methods that are available to you, such as Interac or online telephone banking. You also have the option to pay by check, which you can either mail in or drop off at the student accounts and cashier's office. After that, you'll see the Messages box. This will have the terms and conditions that you need to follow in order to complete your registration. Make sure to read over all of them. They are important. Once you're finished reading through everything, click on the Confirm button at the bottom. Now you must click on the Confirm button in order to complete the payment agreement. If you don't click Confirm, everything will be lost and you'll have to do it all over again. So click on the Confirm button to confirm your payment agreement. Once you've clicked on Confirm, you are now fully registered. Congratulations, you are now fully registered for engineering. Note that there is a Pay Now button at the bottom and you can click that if you decide that you want to pay right now using an online method such as Interac. It will connect with your bank account so you can make the payment right away. If you don't want to pay right now, you can always come back to Solar and click on the payment agreement to complete the payment at any time. If you decide to pay with check, there is a convenient after hours drop box located outside of Gilmer Hall 209. Checks, money orders, and bank drafts can also be mailed to the student accounts and cashier's office. The address is on your screen now and you can visit their website for details. If you do decide to pay with a check, make sure that it's made out to McMaster University and you must include your student number on the check. All right, we've completed the first five steps. Let's recap. We started out by activating our Mac ID. Then we went through all the requirements for completing the new student form, which you'll need to do to get your student ID card. Then we planned out all the courses we needed to take for the program that you're going into, we registered for those courses using Solar and completed the payment agreement. The last step we're going to go over in this video is step number six, which is enabling our McMaster services. This will allow us to access our McMaster email. This step is really important because you need to have your McMaster email activated because that is how McMaster officially communicates with you. Whether there's announcements or news, it'll all be sent to your McMaster email. So you need to have it turned on and make sure to check it frequently. To enable your McMaster email, the first step is to go to Mugsy. That's mugsy.mcmaster.ca. Once you're on Mugsy, Log in with your Mac ID and password. 
and then click on My Mugsy, which is the first navigation link in the top left corner on the navigation bar. This will open a new window with information about your Mac ID account. You'll see a link on the left side under Hot Links that says Enable your Mac ID services. Click on that link. This will bring you to a new screen with another link that says Enable your Mac ID services. Click on that link and now your Mac ID services will be enabled. McMaster has partnered with Google to make the McMaster email service go through Gmail. So it's a branded version of Gmail for McMaster students only. When you want to log into your email, you'll go to https colon slash slash studentmail.mcmaster.ca. You'll see the link on your screen right now. The second URL links to a page on the University Technology Services website that will tell you more about Gmail for students and how the McMaster Gmail service works. There will also be information on there about IMAP services if you want to have your email on your smartphone, as well as answers to some frequently asked questions. By partnering with Google, McMaster is giving you a lot more than just email. You also have access to the full suite of Google services, including Google Docs and Google Calendar. So you can use Google Calendar to input your timetable and schedule meetings. You can also use Google Docs throughout your courses to write notes or to write essays or papers. You can also use Google Docs to collaborate with your classmates on assignments. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for following along and we hope that this video has helped you with registering in first year engineering. If you have any further questions, you can always visit the engineering website. We've put the link on your screen now. If you're a newly admitted Bachelor of Technology program student, then please go to the BTech website at mybtechdegree.ca. Thank you for watching the video and we hope to see you on campus soon.